2 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 to 18, finishing out the chapter. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. And count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given him, as he does in all his letters when he speaks in them of these matters. There are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction, as they do the other scriptures. You, therefore, beloved Knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Now, Paul is closing this letter, and he's bookending. If you look, there's a lot of similarities between the beginning that he starts out and the end. A lot of similarities. He's bookending this entire uh, letter that has been written. And he reminds us of our two spiritual destinations. One is a, a life understanding that we are working towards, walking towards, seeking to grow towards eternal life in heaven. And the other one is a, well, a fighting. And it's a eternal life and eternal death, eternal punishment in hell. He summarizes the three right ways, the things that he's discussed in this book, and he does it simply that first we are to look forward to these things, to look forward to these things, to look forward to the, well, to our death, our separating from this world and being alive in heaven, to look forward towards that end of time, that final day. When a new heaven and a new earth will take over, the Lord will sit on his throne and we will praise and give glory to him forever. We're to look forward to that. To anticipate, not to fear the end. To anticipate it with joy. To be present with the Lord. You know, that's a challenge for all, even believers I know that struggle facing death. They don't look to it with joy. May we grow in Christ so that those end days, when they come, no matter the age, that we may be joyful, leaving a legacy of hope that we truly do believe and know that heaven will be greater. There'll be no sorrow, no loss, no grief, no pain. Be full of joy. The second thing is he tells us to make every effort to be pure. Every effort to be pure. Spotless, he says, right? as you are waiting for those things for heaven, be diligent, intentionally, intentionally seek to be found by him without spot or blemish and to be at peace. Huh. It's to live a life not just seeking him to be holy, not just seeking to live a life where we are devoted to Him, but to love God so much that we love others and we live at peace with all. Man, we need some peace today in our culture, don't we? We need some peace today in our churches. We are to live at 
peace. We don't take correction and get upset and all up in arms and run away from correction from a, a life group or a, a, a Sunday school class or even a congregation just because the pastor said something I don't like and I think he was preaching at me and we run away. <laughs> we were called to live at peace. That doesn't mean that we talk bad about a church that we left and a pastor we didn't like. It doesn't mean that we talk down about other believers. We're to live at peace. It doesn't mean that we treat all unsaved as heathens going to hell and we hate them and we ignore them. We're to live at peace. It doesn't mean that people who uh, dis disagree with our beliefs who live a different lifestyle, that we ignore them, ostracize them, and hate them. We're to live at peace. Now, that peace requires us to speak the truth, but to do so in such a way that it draws them, not pushes them away. We're to live a life of holiness. I've been, I've been watching, good morning, Dave, I've been watching a little bit, there's a, 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 an old movie um, on, uh, on Phineas Bressy, uh, Phineas Bressy, uh, he was one of the founders, one of the founders of the Nazarene denomination, and there's a movie that's out there, it's on YouTube for free, and I, I'd never seen it before, and kind of have been watching that a little bit lately, and uh, Seeing his moment of coming, even later on in life, sometimes we push in like, you know, that, that entire sanctification moment, it happens young and it's got to happen young. Well, for him, it happened after like 30 plus years of ministry, kind of like um, for John Wesley. And to see as he was walking through scripture, walking through a psalm and it hit him. You know, God's always seeking us, no matter our age, to give everything to Him, to surrender it all in holiness. Our pride, our humility, our arrogance, our self-reliance, our self-control. How are you seeking to walk every single day in holiness? To walk in such a way that you preach the gospel even when you don't use words. Do you live in holiness and peace with those around you to where when trials in their life come up, they know you can be trusted? That you're willing to put your self on the line at times to speak up and say, you know what? I know you don't believe in it, but I do, and I will be praying for you. To where maybe you'll be able to say, you know what? Can I pray with you now? I've seen people who have said they disbelieve in God who, when I say that, say, no, 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 you just pray. And it only takes a few short months that all of a sudden they're going because they see the change that has been made and they start to go, yeah, yeah, if you would, I'd love it if you'd pray. May we be a people so focused on the grace of God that's been given to us that it bubbles forth to all. And the third thing that he points out to us is that we understand the Lord's patience the Lord's patience is leading towards salvation. Remember, this is not universalism that everyone will be saved, but it is this universal salvation, universal offering of salvation to all. Everyone will have a chance. Everyone has had a chance and will always have a chance. No one is too far gone. And the Lord delays for one more. Reminds me of that scene if you've ever watched um, uh, The Schindler's List. The Schindler's List is one of those movies that's very, very tough to watch. Um, very beautifully done. Um, showing, 
showing the atrocities of the Holocaust and following the life of one individual, Oscar Schindler, who was a German who saved countless lives. And there's a scene towards the end of it when Oscar Schindler is standing next to his, his car. And the people give him a ring that they made of gold that they made with the fillings from their own teeth. They were so grateful for what he had done for them and for their children and their, what would be their children's children and on and on because he saved them to work in their munitions factory. And oh, by the way, he didn't want them to ever make any real ammunitions that would be used against their, their, uh, their fellow Jews. And so they were a horrible ammunitions facility. But he saved countless individuals, and as they were putting them into a car to go to safety so that when the, uh, when the allies came in to free them, that he would not be maybe shot or imprisoned without that story getting out of what, they had, what he had done for them to save their lives. And he stands, I remember Liam Nilsson in this, this role, he stands next to the vehicle and begins to weep. He looks at the gold on his finger from these individuals and goes, that could have saved four more. That vehicle, maybe another 12. And they said, no, do not focus on what more you could have done, but focus on what you did do, right? We, we focus on God's delaying because he, he, doesn't, he doesn't want any to perish. He doesn't get emotional like Oscar Schindler, but he is delaying day after day wanting to save just one more. Just one more. To see them come to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Just one more. Think about our churches. If that was our focus, just to see one more, not to get caught up in, in, in any other discussion and arguments and worried about whether, the, uh, uh, wh whether we sing hymns or, or, or choruses or sit in pews or chairs or, or if the band was perfect or not or, or any of that, but just to see one more saved and to celebrate that. As the Lord delays, may we praise Him for His giving us the opportunity to witness to just one more. You know, He challenges us here and mentions about Paul's writings and some of the things that are hard to understand. And, and I, I won't end this chapter without reminding us, we interpret the unclear by the clear. The more we read God's Word, the more we listen to those who have studied His Word and know it in and out. And, and I, I love what I'm learning about revelations and some of the unclear things that are being were already revealed in the prophets of old. And you begin to see these connections. May we always not just pass over the unclear. May we not just look at the unclear and try to guess at it. May we know that through the Holy Spirit we can know what he's saying. We're challenged to be spotless like the Old Testament sacrificial offering before God. Spotless and blameless. You will never be spotless and blameless on your own. No works will ever make you that. The only thing that makes us spotless and blameless is a crying out to God, Lord, forgive me, repenting when we've done wrong, every day seeking to follow after him more and more and more. He, through his imputed righteousness, cloaking us with the righteousness of Jesus Christ, are we made spotless? Blameless before God. Blameless and holy. This happens in us because of the blood of Jesus Christ shed for us. That atonement poured out to save us and to redeem us and to restore us. We can then be sure of our position in Christ. 
sure. There's that blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased with blood, born of the Spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the days long. We can be assured of our position in Christ. No doubts can assuage us, can batter us around. We can stand sure in the midst of the storm. We can stand sure of our salvation. John Wesley, in our Wesleyan views, we call this that conditional. It's not eternal security as some preach eternal security. It's conditional. It's God can keep us from all sins in this life. He can keep us from that desire to sin, but yet at the same time we have the free will to choose and to care for or neglect our spiritual life to stand firm or to fall. And so we must intentionally leave error behind. We must intentionally learn to discern the Holy Spirit in our lives, to discern the truth from the error of this world, the truth of the gospel from the flavor of the month in the political church. We must intentionally seek after and follow after Christ alone. May we grow in the great knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. The highest praise that we can give is to give glory to Jesus Christ. I love these last two verses. You, therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, knowing that well, tough times will come. Knowing the end is coming, it'll delay some. You may not live to see it. Take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. Progressive Christianity is swaying many people to disbelieve believe the truth of the Word of God. May we not grow sway, be, be swayed by that, carried away, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and to the end, to the day of eternity. Amen. So I end with these two questions. Who or what do you glorify? Who or what will your life glorify? Your life song, as Casting Crowns puts it, right? Who or what will you glorify? Will you glorify God alone? Or will you glorify the ways of man, of humanity, fallen, sinful, carried away by theologies and thoughts that are created by man that are not historically proven. Hold sway to doubts. Now remember, doubts are okay. I was walking with someone yesterday who's doubting, questioning. They've experienced a lot of hurt and trauma in their lives. And it's easy in that to question God's sovereignty. They can't see where God's brought them right now. They can't see his hand on their life, even though others can. They're dealing with this, and it's okay. I didn't answer them. I didn't give them all the answers. I didn't, I didn't tell them to 
get their head out of their their the the background of trauma right oh just ignore that it's okay suck it up no they need to sit in it they need to trust god in it they need to hear god in it have your way oh lord in us and through us peter ends with that challenge who or what do you glorify? Will your life sing praises only to God? That may look differently in your life than mine. I don't know. But how will God work in you? How will you allow him and intentionally seek him each and every day? For his glory and in his strength. So God, as we close out this book of 2 Peter, Lord, I thank you what over the last 60 days you've shown us just in First and 2 Peter alone. Remind us of your glory. Remind us of your grace. Even just last night, we were in the youth group talking to the students about praying for others, forgiving others. And it's just so amazing to see how you are working in the lives of our students. How on fire they've been from camp. And how you're growing them more and more to hear from you, to see you working. So God, may that fire never die out. May we live lives that only glorify you. Lord, grow us each and every day. Intentionally help us to sit before you and ask, is there any unpleasing way in me? Search my heart, O God, and see. Reveal to us, Lord, Anything that it is that we need to lay at your feet to surrender, that we need to work on. May we hear your critique and be willing to listen. Give us hearts that long for you and you alone. So that we may go out before our family, our friends, our co-workers and our neighbors, and everyone that we meet and share the good news. To do so in the way we live our lives so they may see it and glorify God, to be drawn to you. May we do it when prompted with the words from your Holy Spirit sharing what God's done, maybe just simply saying, can I pray with you? Not just for you, but with you. Strengthen us, God. Embolden us in the knowledge of your work on the cross, defeating sin and the power of Satan and conquering death so that we too as we look towards the end of all days may not come there with fear but say as the psalmist O oh, death where is your sting O oh, death where is your victory it has been broken through Jesus because we know without a shadow of a doubt that it is not the end, death is not the end, but just a beginning. Work in us, O oh God. Help us to sing out your praises every single day. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, go in peace, and I pray you have a great rest of the afternoon.
and we will see you once again when we pick back up with uh, 1 John in just a few weeks.